All right. We now welcome here, uh, following qualifying for the uh, Hollywood Casino 400, we bring in Carl Edwards, who qualified second in the number 99 Affleck Ford, and Kyle Bush, who qualified third for Sunday's race in the number 18 M&M's Toyota. So, Carl, we'll start with you. Just talk a little bit about your qualifying run. Not bad. Which one did you say? You said Carl. Carl. It's like blended them, <laughs> blended them both. You did. Did you really just say that? That's what you did. It's weird how those letters can almost sound like those letters. Here you go. You know? I get called Kyle a lot. I don't know if you get wow. called Carl ever. Sometimes. All right. Uh, <laughs> M&M's Toyota wasn't bad. You know, certainly um, better than we expected, but not quite as good as we wanted. So, uh, you know, we'll take that. And uh, we had a really good run through one and two, just being able to get in there and, and have uh, confidence in the car that it wasn't going to get loose or anything and then and, and being able to get back to the throttle to carry good straightaway speed. Um, the wind blowing today was uh, was kind of a handful for a lot of cars and was for us a little bit too just getting down in turn three couldn't get to the bottom as good as i wanted to but uh overall good day good speed and um you know we qualified third here in the spring but certainly didn't race to our potential but hopefully we can here sunday all right you in the black <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um yeah this is uh this is, i think the best we've ever qualified here so i'm not gonna Kind of um, act like I'm frustrated about it. Uh, I would obviously like to be on the pole, but I, I didn't think we were going to be this good in practice. We struggled a little bit. We picked up four tenths or something like that. So it was a, a big pickup for us. I'm, I'm proud of our qualifying effort and pretty excited to have a all forward front row. I think that's uh, I think that's pretty neat. There's a lot of pride in that for our guys at the shop. Answer it, Bill. <laughs> all right, we'll open it up for questions for Kyle and Carl. Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. Randy, you got anything? <laughs> well, for each of you, I mean, Kyle, we've kind of talked about your struggles here at Kansas. Does this, does this give you a little more confidence, you know, being able to start up so high? Um, not really, to be honest with you. We qualified third here in the spring and, uh, you know, didn't do so hot by, with that. But uh, today was a good day. You know, we unloaded in race trim. We spent a little bit of time there. and. Car was really loose, but we made some gains on it, and then uh, all we did was swap over to race trim, made two or qualifying trim, and we made two runs there, and felt like the car had decent speed. Um, you know, posted I think uh, eighth fastest time. So, um, you know, I'm I'm still looking forward to the race. I feel like starting up front is obviously beneficial. Getting a good pit selection is beneficial. So um, to carry those things into Sunday, and uh, you know, my next closest. Competitor for the chase starts right in front of me. So, um, you know, other than that, we're not worried about who's behind us. Well, that's the thing, too, Carl. I mean, you really want to get that nose ahead of Greg tomorrow to get that, get that lap. I mean, there's a point right there. Yeah, there is. I, I think he has to lead the um, across the start finish line. The well, no, I guess yeah, that's the start of the race, so that lap doesn't count. Um, yeah, I want to, I want to lead the first lap. So, uh, you know, hopefully, though, it, it's like Kyle said. I mean, you know, qualifying here is not really indicative of how you're going to run in the race. You know, hopefully our qualifying effort translates into a good race, but we've got to focus really hard on race trim tomorrow. You know, it's, uh, you know, the, the race is a long one. You can pass here. There, there, it really matters how fast your car is in race trim. Let me ask one more question. It's funny, last week a non-chase guy, last week a non-chase guy wins the poll. Today a non-chase guy wins the poll. Is it because you guys are working more for what you're going to do, or saving what you're going to do for, for the race, and they're just going all out just to exactly. Get we weren't really trying that hard, so I'm I'm joking. I, w I wish that was the case. We focused on qualifying trim all yeah. day, so if, if it wasn't that hard, you know, yeah, hey. <laughs> it's hard to get these poles, and you know, the, with I've the got wind today, four in my career. You only do you have? I don't even know. Five, maybe six. Yeah. It's not many. No. Um, Races are more important. Yes, they are. And it, it's, that's what we're, my guys and I were talking about. We qualified fourth last week. We were disappointed. 25 laps in the race, you can't even remember where you qualified. So, um, you know, obviously we're up here discounting how important qualifying is because we didn't get on the pole. But um, <laughs> it, we're, we're hoping that it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. We're hoping that the race is the, more, you know, the part where we can show how fast we are. All right, we'll take a question from Steve, then come back to Bob. Steve Richards, the PRN. Kyle, real quick, I mean, are you surprised that Clint left to go to – Michael Walter of a Toyota, and what do you think Clint brings to the Toyota guys? Um, I mean, you ask if I'm surprised. I mean, it's, you know, in this sport, you've got to do what's best for yourself, what's best to 
uh, keep yourself in the door on the racetrack, you know. And um, fortunately, Clint found a sponsor that wanted to go with him and, and be able to put a deal together at uh, MWR. You know, that certainly helps out Michael Waltrip Racing, bringing in a third team as of now and um, being able to work with the, the Toyota guys, the Toyota bunch, you know. Um, I like Clint. I think he'd be uh, an advocate and, um, you know, one that we can really pull off of and learn from knowing all the things that he knows with being at RCR for so long. So um, I think it will be good. Uh, Bob, Bob Go Hawker, Christine Daly, um, for either one or both of you, um, what, what translates more to here? Uh, the information that you have from June or the information from Chicago a couple of weeks ago? That's a good question. You tell me, Carl. I don't know. Um, your race didn't go so well in June, did it? In Chicago? Yeah, it was not bad. I was I running meant, fifth until I ran out of gas. I meant from here, the first race. Here? First yeah. race. No, it didn't go good. So his nose were probably not using those. And then our race went okay, so we're probably going to use some of those. Um, I think each track is different enough. I think you focus more on the track that, you know, we would focus more on Kansas notes than we do on, on Chicago. Um, but, you know, this, this sport changes so fast. I don't know about Kyle's team, but, I mean, you're always developing something, you know, and there's always new stuff. There's always new setup ideas and things you're working on, and, and you just have to keep moving forward. That's why I think the times were faster uh, in practice today. I know our, our mock qualifying times were faster than, than, than we ran when we were just here uh, the previous race. You know, we... We kept in the first race here's right front camber. We're going to run the Michigan left rear spring. We're going to run the truck arm split from Kentucky. And, um, you know, we'll probably go with a little bump stop ratio like uh, we had at Chicago. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take our next question from Mike in the back. Yeah. Mike Muller, Mike Muller. Not, not. I think I'm right on this. There have been seven mile-and-a-half races at the cookie-cutter tracks and seven different winners this year. Does that say anything? I mean, is it just coincidence, or is it just like almost like Talladega or Daytona, you know, you have a mile-and-a-half track? You'd think that at a mile-and-a-half track, if something works for one guy, it worked for him for two or three races or something. If it ain't us winning, hopefully it's not another chase guy. <laughs> I can't agree with that. <laughs> uh, you could say the same yeah, thing. Yeah, right. I could say the same thing, but uh, I think it just shows that, I mean, it's so competitive, and strategy, you know, pit strategy is so important. You know, those calls you make at the end of the race are important, and these races can be won by anyone. So, you know, not by anyone, but there are a number, there are a larger group of people who, who, could, uh, who could be winners in these races than, than I've seen in my short career here. So I think that's where the, the you know, the, the new winners come from, the different winners. Any other questions? All right, gentlemen, good luck Thanks, on guys. Sunday. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Enjoyable.